My name is Dr. Daniel Amick and I'm the chair of the Department of Anthropology at Loyola University. I'm an archaeologist and I specialize in the archaeology of Ice Age North America. When most people think of the Ice Age, they think of a day like today, a world that was cold, windy, wet, and frigid. However, the Ice Age was not like that in general. Almost all of Canada was covered with an ice sheet that was up to two miles thick. Uh, this limited people's opportunity to get into the New World, and we don't see any evidence that people were here prior to about 18,000 years ago. We now have uh, two primary routes in which people seem to have come into North America. A coastal route, both along the west coast and possibly along the east coast as well, uh, perhaps coming from uh, European countries, and uh, later on coming through an ice-free corridor. It also appears that there were multiple migrations of people who came into the New World. People streamed through several different times and probably from different locations. Native uh, North and South Americans may have entered the continent much later than these earliest populations and perhaps swamped them out biologically. Throughout much of North America and South America, what we saw was a world that was much different from our typical perception of an icy world. During the last ice age, winters were warmer and summers were cooler, meaning there was not as much difference in climate between the winter and the summer. Also, much of the world had a much uh, more rich biological uh, component, including very large animals that we know as megafauna. Mammoths, mastodons, uh, giant bison, the giant ground sloth, which was nine feet tall at the shoulder, uh, other forms of ground sloth, uh, giant tortoises, land tortoises that were uh, 18 inches long, uh, uh, teratorns, uh, which were uh, carnivorous uh, birds, horses, the North American horse, which then went extinct and was brought back by Europeans, a form of camel that was native to North America, giant uh, armadillos uh, known as glyptodonts, uh, uh, wolves, uh, very large wolves known as the dire wolf, and perhaps the most uh, terrifying of all the predators, the short-faced bear, which stood as tall as a human being. It may have had uh, perhaps the greatest uh, crushing power in its jaws of any other uh, predator that ever lived. The earth has been going in and out of ice ages for uh, much of the last three million years. We've had over 19 major ice ages during that period, and that seems to be largely driven by the Earth's orbit, which is not a perfect circle, but really an ellipse, and the fact that the Earth has a little bit of a wobble and variation in the tilt of our orbit. And that seems to be the primary reason that we go into and out of ice ages. We will be heading into another ice age, but it probably won't happen for another 10,000 years, so I wouldn't start worrying about it now. Today, the landscape looks much different than it did 12,000 years ago. Today, what we see is the human footprint, which has diced up the land in tiny little cubes. And this is an example of one of the sites that we have been working at for the past several years, known as Mueller Keck, which lies just outside of St. Louis, next to the Mississippi River. This is very difficult excavating. There aren't uh, tremendous spectacular finds. Uh, the finds of a hunter and gatherer camp are very light. Uh, what they usually represent are just a handful of stone artifacts and some of the chippage from manufacturing those stone tools or resharpening those stone tools. Perhaps if you're lucky, maybe a few bones, and perhaps if you're luckier still, maybe uh, a hearth or the remnants of a hearth that would allow you to date the site. One of the important aspects of trying to interpret uh, the archaeology of the last ice age is through stone tools and uh, we have a great record of stone tools across North America and even into Siberia and South America that help explain that. Some of the artifacts that have been found in Siberia and Alaska seem to be very different from, from many of the Ice Age artifacts that are found in North America and South America, which is leading us to believe more and more that some of these early occupations may have derived from uh, other locations than Northeast Asia, as you can see by these artifacts here, which tend to be uh, very diminutive stone tool technology of North America seems much more related to some of the stone tool technologies of Europe, which has some significant implications for how we might look at colonization. The first peoples to get to North America 
undoubtedly did find icy territory once they reached the northern part of the Midwest. However, they lived primarily throughout uh, the southern margin and the mid-continental region of the U.S. And whenever they approached these ice margins, they seemed to have been repelled uh, because they just weren't very habitable places. As you move farther to the west and farther to the south, you start seeing variation in Clovis. For example, these pieces here are from Florida. They seem to be a related culture known as uh, Simpson or Swanee. And that pattern of a fishtail type appearance continues on into South America with pieces uh, such as this that are found as far south as Argentina. Archaeologists really aren't simply out there looking for artifacts in kind of a willy-nilly fashion. In many ways, it's not the artifacts that are important to us, but the data themselves, the data that we collect about those artifacts and especially about their context. Once we collect all of those data, this is one of the kinds of things that we do with it. We make a topographic map that shows the location of all of the different artifacts, and here we've color-coded them. One of the more interesting things about the end of the last ice age was that it didn't occur in a very gradual fashion. Instead, it was a very staccato fashion. It was like a roller coaster going up and down. There would be warm periods, which would revert back to cold periods and back to warm periods. It tells us that human beings are capable of adapting to rapid climate change much uh, like the climate change we're being confronted with today. However, the people who lived during the last ice age were hunters and gatherers. They didn't live in cities. They didn't live by agriculture. So when things got bad, they were able to move. And there weren't over six billion people on the planet. There were probably well less than a million people on the planet at the time. So resources were much more abundant relative to the number of people who were there.